Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I am thrilled to be over on the Stamp Market blog today with a few of their new products, the Big Botanicals and Lovely Labels Stamp and Die Set. And as you can see here from my example card, we're going to be making some die cut shape frames here. And these are on foam tape. So once I cut out the shapes or the dies from the stamps, then we'll cut it out from a larger die and it will make a really fun shape without actually having to have that shape on the card. I know it's a little bit confusing, but they're really fun and I wanna show you how I do that here. So I'm going to be using some Catherine Puller inks in Eucalyptus, Flirty Fuchsia, Mint to Be, and Sauna. I really love that the stamp market uses a lot of these colors together most of the time and I wanted to show that in my projects today. So I'm going to pull out my mini Misty here and just stamp these two botanical images together. It makes it really easy when you use your Misty because I only need to do it once, even if I want to use several colors. So here I'm going to stamp both colors. I'm going to do one botanical branch in Mint to Be and the other in Flirty Fuchsia. And as long as I keep the uh, the ink pad in the parameters of those branches each will come out perfect and it's hard to see that meant to be here because of the lighting but I promise you it's <laughs> it's there and to make these a little shinier and to stand out a little bit more I'm going to go over them one more time with Versamark ink and then I'm going to put some clear embossing powder over that and heat it with my heat gun this will make it a little more textured a little shiny and it's going to sort of make the colors pop a little bit more. On my original example that I showed you with the love sentiment, I actually used Nouveau Glimmer Paste to do a very similar thing, but I wanted this one to be a little bit more subtle, less glittery, uh, if that's not your type of thing. So I repeated the exact process in the eucalyptus and sauna inks, and now I'm just lining up the coordinating dies with these stamps. To make sure it doesn't move around in my die cutting machine I'm using some painters tape and then I'm going to go ahead and put that in my spellbinders platinum six die cutting machine and run that through and as you can see here in the larger branch there are some center pieces that pop out which I just love because I think it gives it that more just that little bit more dimension and uh, detail so here I'm going to go ahead and take out all of the lovely label dies now when I spread them out, you'll see that there's lots of dies. So not all of these cut the actual die out. Half cut the shape out and then half are is actually the dotted line detail for the inside. So you can add the dotted line or the stitch line if you'd like, but you don't have to have it. And I love that option because sometimes the card is busy enough or the design is busy enough that I don't need it. And sometimes I feel like I really need that stitched line. So it's great that you have the option of doing either or. I've sped this up because it's a little redundant, but what I'm doing basically is just laying that die where I think that I would like it on my card. I'm going to keep it in the top center portion, and then I want to line up all of my die cuts on the inside there. This is basically just creating this frame, and you'll see that I end up leaving the center pretty blank uh, in my final design, but that's because I'm going to, one, I'm going to add another botanical piece in there, later but two i'm also going to end up putting my sentiment right over the top of that so having that center blank doesn't really affect the design too much but if you wanted to have a smaller sentiment and you weren't going to cover the center you could always just put another tiny die cut there in the center to cover up that blank space so when I put that through my die cutting machine, after I've taped that all together to make sure that none of the pieces move around, I'll just remove the outer pieces. So I want to leave the pieces that I'm actually going to end up taping or adhering to my card front on the center. You can see there that I went ahead and added that little branch in the center, and that was just by clipping off a piece that had come off in the die machine and then just adhering it with glue to the back side of one of those center pieces. 
So now I'm going to apply foam tape pieces to the back of my die cuts. And because I kept them all taped inside that larger die, I'm able just to take the entire die, line it up where I would like it after I take the backing off of all of that foam tape, and then adhere it all by just pressing down in the center. This makes it really easy because now it will keep that shape without having to go in and try to fit it all within the shape, especially a shape like this that's a little bit more complex with the rounded edges and sort of pointed up uh, centers on the top and the bottom. And when I remove the die in just a minute, you'll see that it comes out perfectly. So I just had to be careful with those uh, painter's tape pieces just to pull them off easily. But embossing that in clear embossing powder actually helps that a little bit too, and it's less likely to peel up any of the paper. I love the way that this came out and I really like the dimension that you get using the foam tape with the die cut pieces. It sort of just gives it that extra dimension and to keep a really simple card simple, but adding that extra interest. And I really love that. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and I hope that you will visit the stamp market blog. All of the links are in the description as well as links to all of the products used today. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye.